I'm going to show you how to do this uh, experiment on burning magnesium, just in case you missed it in class, and then you've got no excuses. Okay, so today we're going to be doing a conservation of mass experiment, and specifically we're going to burn some magnesium uh, in air, and we're going to look at what happens to the mass uh, when we burn it. Okay, here's our equipment that we're going to be using. We are going to be burning a piece of magnesium ribbon here. Uh, we're going to be using a Bunsen burner to heat it. We've got a crucible with a lid on um, held in this pipe clay triangle. And then we've got our usual um, heat mat and tripod. In order to measure the mass, we're using a digital scales, which is a particularly accurate one as it goes to two decimal places. We're going to need that level of accuracy um, for our measuring. Now I'm going to take my piece of magnesium and I'm going to roll it up. It's easier to do with two hands, guys. That will have to do with one hand. Okay, and then I'm going to put it into my crucible and see what the new mass is. Okay, so now I have a mass of 15.13 grams, which I'm going to record. Oops. In my table over here. Okay, now I'm ready to actually heat up my magnesium. So I'm going to put it over here and I'm going to put the crucible lid on top. And I'm ready then to put my Bunsen burner onto the hot flame by opening the collar and putting my Bunsen burner underneath. Okay, we're going to lift up the lid again and see whether we have managed to ignite the magnesium yet. You can see it's just starting to go there. It's glowing and turning white as the reaction occurs. You can see the smoke coming out. We don't want smoke to escape. That's actually product escaping. So we're going to put the lid back on at this point. So you can continue to check that the reaction is occurring. You can see this further ignition there when I'm letting oxygen in. So I'm going to close it back up. And I'm going to keep doing that until the point where when I lift up the lid, I don't see any more ignition. I can see ignition again, so it's still reacting. Okay, still see a bit of ignition there. Uh, when you're doing this experiment, you do need to be careful not to look uh, too directly at the bright white light that is produced by the burning magnesium because it can cause damage to the eyes. So try not to look directly into the burning flame. Okay, we do have some glowing still, but you can see it's not actually igniting this time. So I'm going to um, now take the Bunsen burner away and just put that on the safety flame because I will need it again a bit later. Um, and now I'm going to let my crucible cool down for a little while. Okay, it's time to measure the mass of my product, which is in here. So I'm going to place that on the scales again using my tongs. And you can see it's now 15.17 grams, which I'm going to record. 15.17. Okay, and now I need to do the third column, which is the, the oh, that should be mass. Who made this worksheet, Miss Butler? Um, so, well done for noticing everybody that that is a mistake. It should not say weight, it should say mass there. Uh, and so now we're going to get the mass after reheating. Okay, so um, I've put my crucible back on for reheating and I'm just going to do what I did before and check every now and then uh, by lifting up the lid slightly. Although I've put it back on really wonky, so now I can't do that. 
guys, this is very hard doing everything one-handed, so uh, make sure you use both your hands. Uh, so I can see that there's no uh, reaction happening, um, so hopefully I'm going to have nice, accurate results. All right, let's uh, test out our mass after reheating. Okay, here's my mass after reheating. You can see it's exactly the same as it was the first time. So I'm going to put 15.17 in here, and now you can see my three sets of results. Now you need to repeat this experiment two more times, obviously, to be reliable, guys. Um, so I'm just going to do that really quickly. So here are my three sets of results, and you can see in my first ex experiment, um, I've got a mass increase of 0.04 grams, which is a very small amount, but it is an increase in mass nonetheless. In my second, I've got a mass increase um, again, a slightly smaller increase this time. Uh, and then in my third, again, I've got a mass increase. So that tells me that it's very fairly reliable that there should be a mass increase in this case. And we'll look at why in a second. Um, after reheating, I just want to note that in these two experiments or tests, um, there was no increase after reheating, but in this one there was. And again, we'll look at why in a second. Okay, thinking about our conclusions then. Um, one of the things we can conclude is that when we burn magnesium in air, um, we increase the mass. And we're going to look at why we increase the mass. And it's a very simple concept really. If we think about it, we've started with magnesium ribbon. I'm just going to use the symbols. Um, and we've added oxygen to form the compound magnesium oxide. Now, when we initially measure the mass, we can only measure the mass of the magnesium. We're not measuring the mass of the oxygen because um, obviously the oxygen is not bonded to the magnesium. When we measure the mass the second time in this column here, the oxygen has been bonded to the magnesium, so we can now measure the mass of both the magnesium and the oxygen. So there appears to be an increase in mass. If you think about it, actually there hasn't been an increase in mass, it's just that we're now able to measure the oxygen mass as well. Let's have a think then about why in these two instances there was no increase the second time and in this one there was. So pause the video and see if you can work out why yourself. Okay, hopefully you might have got to the correct answer. In these two instances, there's no increase in mass. So the fact that there is no increase tells us that the reaction must have been complete, i.e. all the magnesium had reacted and bonded to form magnesium oxide. In this second one, where there's another increase, what this tells us is that the reaction was incomplete. and that some of the magnesium had not become magnesium oxide compound. Um, and so that when we reheated it, there was a further increase in mass because the magnesium that hadn't reacted then did react and became magnesium oxide. Okay, evaluating. Thinking about accuracy, we used a scales that was accurate to two decimal places. That makes it very, very accurate um, and allows us to see very small changes in mass. In terms of reliability, we've done our test three times to make sure that we are getting reliable results. Let's take a quick look at our product, which is the magnesium oxide. There we go. So you can see that it's gone from being a grey metal to a white powder, which is very brittle. We can break it really easily by just tapping it. There we go. And that's how we do the burning magnesium reaction, guys. Hurrah!